Jimmy Cavanaugh had this look in his eyes. Hate. Nothing but hate. There was no trust in his eyes. The people who knew him all said the same thing. Jimmy Cavanaugh was not someone to mess around with. I would say uh, at that time, one of the most dangerous individuals we had in this jail. The message spread quickly. Mess with Jimmy Cavanaugh and be ready to pay with your life. You better be prepared to take them out where they're taking you out. I learned to strike back and strike back with a vengeance. There was a deep anger that started building up in Jimmy Cavanaugh at a very early age. He was brought up during the 50s in Halifax, Nova Scotia. His father was an angry drunk, and far too often, a frightened young boy became a target of the abuse. This one is in 1960, and I'm on the back porch. What seemed like a happy, normal childhood was anything but. And I'm smiling there, but I'm hurting on the inside. Jimmy Cavanaugh learned to live with the pain, but he hated it. I can remember the good times, but I also remember the times when my dad was uh, consumed with alcoholism, and he would come home and beat on my mother, and there would be fights, and I would crawl under the couch and cry, and I couldn't understand why. And then that's when I started running the streets of Halifax. And as he ran the streets, young Jimmy Cavanaugh learned to live the criminal life. The kid was always in trouble. He became known as the boy who always escaped. There was a reason he didn't want to stay in the reform schools they sent him to. From age six right up to age 15, I went through uh, physical abuses, psychological abuses while I ran the streets. I was sexually abused. And in the reform school, again, I went through physical and sexual abuses at the hands of counselors and other uh, prisoners that were there. And I, I was a hurting individual. His teenage years, a revolving door of incarceration, escape, and more crime. A young man, hurting, learned to strike back. The first person that stroked my hair back then, I had lots of it, and said, you're a cute kid. I knew what was coming, so I smashed him in the head with a chair. Another guy I poked him with a, a sharpened piece of wire. He blamed society. He hated the police, who were always locking him up. By 1970, Jimmy Cavanaugh was back on the streets. It was time for revenge. I had... Uh, got out of Dorchester Penitentiary after serving seven years for armed robbery. I was on my way to shoot and kill an informer, and uh, the RCMP came for a routine check to stop that car. And when the RCMP officer came to the window, I threw down on him with the shotgun, and he was maybe two, three feet away from the end of the barrel, and I pulled the trigger, and I meant to kill him. Only the shotgun malfunctioned, and that's what saved his life. I was given two 15-year sentences concurrent for two attempted murders in that situation. Finally, the point of no return. Kavanaugh became one of the first inmates at Canada's new super maximum security prison near Kingston. To me, I was destined never to be released back into society. He was sent to a special handling unit at Millhaven Penitentiary, set aside for only the most dangerous people in the system. Here, life would get worse before it got better much worse. Yes, I killed a, a man in Millhaven here in uh, 1975. It's a parcel of dirt and concrete called the most dangerous square mile in Canada. Millhaven Penitentiary was built in the early 70s to house the toughest, the meanest, the most dangerous prisoners in the country. I resented authority. Uh, I hated uh, society. Jimmy you know, I, Cavanaugh was perfect I, for the place. You know, I, I just built up uh, an anger where I vented it out at anyone and everyone around me. He lived his life like a caged animal, trapped inside a tiny cell. We're here 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day, and all we do is think of ways to try to gain our freedom he was a ticking time bomb, and everyone here knew it. He was nobody to be fooled around with, because uh, if he he was the type of guy that, if he took an ocean to get even with somebody, he got even with him. No two ways about it. He was a he was a dangerous guy as far as inmates, other inmates. 
I would say probably at that time he was one of the most dangerous guys we had in this jail. So I killed a, a man in Millhaven here. He was sexually molesting a, a person I knew, a young guy. And when the guy told me what was happening, I told him, I said, I know the guy. I'll go and talk to him, tell him to leave you alone. And I approached him in his cell, and I told him uh, I knew what was going on. And I said, it isn't right that you're imposing yourself on this guy. He's got enough to do with his sentence. Leave him alone. And he was belligerent with me, told me he was going to do what he felt like doing. And he got up off his bed and reached into his locker area where he had a weapon there. And uh, he threatened me with the weapon. And I told him, I said, you're threatening me? And that sort of made my blood boil. And his mistake was that he didn't use it on me. He should have tried to use it on me right then rather than threaten me. So I went away and I got a weapon. I come back. I confronted him. We got into an altercation. I killed him. And no. I, I didn't, didn't care. Didn't care. Didn't, didn't care whatsoever. Jimmy Cavanaugh, the angry man, was now a convicted killer. And you can kill a person with your hands or you can kill them with a weapon. It uh, doesn't take much to, to kill a human being. I think I had come to the point where I was pretty well out of control. He was, he says now, an agent of Satan. And what happened next became the talk of the prison system. Jimmy Cavanaugh, dangerous, mean-spirited killer, claimed he had found Jesus Christ and was ready to turn a new page in his life. If it wasn't for the uh, strength, the inner strength the Lord gives me, uh, in the peace, I would never have been able to overcome the things that I've faced in my life up to this point. It happened nearly 20 years ago, another Christmas, and Kavanaugh was all alone in this tiny cell when a card came from another tough guy Kavanaugh ran into in prison, a guy named Ernie Hollins, who got out, found religion, and was writing to ask Kavanaugh to pray for him. The card was a simple act of kindness, that hit Jimmy Cavanaugh like a ton of bricks. I said a simple prayer for myself. I said, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Give me the strength, patience, and wisdom for to get through each day. And I had a warmth that went through my body, and that shook me up. The next night, I prayed for all of my friends, Ernie Hollins and his family and my family. And then after I got done praying for everyone, I paused and I said, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Give me the strength, patience, and wisdom for to get through each day. And I received that warmth again. And I broke down and I cried that night. It was like a cleansing inside of me. Uh, but the third night, when I said that prayer, I did not receive that warmth that I did on the two previous nights. And I realized I had a decision to make, accept it or reject it, and I accepted it. The new weapon he carried was a Bible and a totally different attitude. I don't think anybody really uh, took that change 100% at that time. Some of the biggest skeptics were the other inmates. One guy taunted him to his face. It was, Kavanaugh believes now, a test. In the natural, in my flesh, I wanted to reach out and crush him. I wanted to just rip his throat up. But you didn't? No, I didn't. I went to my cell and I prayed for myself and I prayed for him. In the natural, the old Jim would have reacted in the natural and I, and I would have hurt him or taken his life right there. This was the exercise yard for the special handling unit. The caged animal was starting to see some hope. Yeah, it used to be enjoyable just to be out here. And some days in the, in the fall, you could see deer coming out of the woods and grazing on the grass on the other side there. You sometimes would say, well, I'd like to be a deer. Even if I was confined still in that prison cell, after going through the spiritual conversion I went through, I was set free. And if they still had me locked in that cell today, and I knew I was never ever getting out, I would still be free. You can relate to the deer. Oh yeah, yeah. I wanted to run like that deer. <laughs> Instead, Kavanaugh faced a setback that left him paralyzed and challenged his faith. An aneurysm damaged his spinal cord. He was transferred out of Millhaven to Collins Bay, a prison with wheelchair access. Doctors said he'd never walk again. I was paralyzed and I was in a wheelchair. And I had one other prisoner push me out to the yard to exercise. I said, how 
far is it around the yard? He said, it's about a quarter mile. And I said, well, maybe someday I'll be able to walk it. It was like somebody saying in the back of my mind, why not now? And I obeyed that voice in the back of my mind and I pushed myself up out of the wheelchair and I had two canes in and I anchored the canes, one foot, then another, and then another. And it took me 55 minutes of stopping and going to do that full complete circuit around the yard and get back to my wheelchair. And I fell down in the wheelchair full of sweat and I was in some discomfort, but I was saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, I, I walked it. Within a couple of years, Kavanaugh would do the impossible. The man who was told he'd never reform, who was told he'd live the rest of his life in a wheelchair, walked out of prison, a free man. And now, 11 years after his release, Jimmy Kavanaugh is right back where he started, behind bars. This time, he's here for a different reason. You've been attending the Sunday groups? Yeah, regular going, really helpful. Prison. Jimmy Kavanaugh had finally won his ticket out of this place. For the first time since he was a teenager, he was out on the streets, determined never to go back. I'm saddened over the way I used to be, uh, for the simple reason is that I know there are others who are warehoused in prisons across Canada, and in the States, all over the world. Prisons do not rehabilitate. Prisons won't change anyone. They'll warehouse them along with their problems, the inner problems that they have for X number of years, and then they'll be cast out onto the street. Prison never changed me. It would never have changed me. It made you angrier, if anything. Angrier, yeah. Angry against my, myself for having a lousy life, angry against everyone around me that uh, would be involved in detaining me. He thought he left this all behind, but he hadn't. There was something tugging at Kavanaugh, urging him to go back and help others find the path that he found. They can learn by seeing what I went through in my past. They can learn by seeing that it was a hopeless case and that something dramatic did take place. But unless they're willing to make the effort themselves and reach out, there's nothing I can do for them other than to, to give them guidance and to point them in the right direction. It's up to them. Well, that was a good uh, spiritual weekend that we had here. So Jimmy Cavanaugh has discovered a new mission in life, walking the yards of the prisons that once held him, sharing his message of change, of hope. It's in prison workshops, not churches, that you find his congregation. People traveling the same rocky road Kavanaugh once traveled. Uh, Jimmy's been out now, I think, 10, 11 years. And his main concern is still for the guys inside. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, you too. How you been? Pretty good. Yeah, working hard? Trying to. <laughs> when I met him, it was like, you know, the first thing he ever did was shake my hand and said, Jesus loves you. And it was like, are you sure you're Jimmy Kavanaugh? I've, I've heard a lot of bad things about you. Uh, are they true? And he, and he took the time and he shared what Christ did to his life. And uh, it was amazing. This guy was legend. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. The people definitely here, legend. the people Kavanaugh tries to help, know only too well the risks of living in this place. In this environment, they play a game called survival. Kavanaugh was pretty good at it. Others are still searching for their place. Mike, Mike, Mike. Denzel Mike, Young, Mike, a convicted Mike, Mike. killer who always maintained his innocence, had his music Mike. and his Bible to carry him through his days behind bars. Always he was aware of the risks of living here. Nagi them no guilty plea, oh me. This is the nigga sharky. Come check and sharky. This is like a jungle. Anything can happen in here, man. This is like like a den, you know? In here, it's either you do or you die, you know? You have to stand up and defend your life in here, 
and at the same time you have to try to get in no problem so it's like I'm walking on a track and, and a tin ice in here like on the dead man me want them for no for them talkies rumble who me It would be so easy to walk away from this place forever, to leave the violence and the memories behind. But Jimmy Cavanaugh soldiers on, trying to do for others what Ernie Hollins did for him. Take a look back here. I mean, I look at you now, I find it hard to believe this was your life. That w this was my life. I spent 20 years in and out of these places, and uh, I just thank the Lord that my life has been changed and that I've been out 11 years now and I don't have to wheel down here or walk down here and go into a prison cell to be locked in for the night. Well, I think that kind of connection of, of having been in this position, uh, of having uh, been an offender, done a lot of time inside, so he knows uh, everything that goes on inside and he can relate to, to the men on, and, and the women at P4W on that kind of a level. Uh, that uh, chaplains aren't able to. I, th I think he brings uh, a sincerity and, and a gentleness, uh, faithfulness to his work that is a, a real encouragement to others inside. The time he spent in prison, the time he spent looking out his cell window searching for answers, has given Kavanaugh an unusual gift. Because of who he was, and who he is now, Jimmy Cavanaugh, born-again Christian, who pulled his life from the ashes, commands respect. Hi. Hi, Diane. Good to see you again. <laughs> How have things been? Hectic. Hectic, eh? Well, there's a, a scripture here I'd like to read to you, Diane. It's, it's one that... Sometimes when I'm going through a lot of hardships and trials, I'll, I'll read this. It's from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. <clears throat> but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Sometimes the stress and the anger is so high in here. And you can cut it with a knife sometimes. And uh, like Jim comes in and he gives us a chance to be able to vent the way we're feeling, or vent some of the anger. Uh, he sits there and he listens and tries to help if he can. That's one I would like to encourage you to, to read later He's on. He's here spreading the word of Christ, but his mission extends beyond religion. Last year, year Eddie before, McCaffrey, yeah. yes. Just look at the friendship he's developed with Rick Atkinson, a career criminal, a tough guy, who spent almost his entire adult life behind bars. Well, I'm a former bank robber myself, and I would say bank robber types look up to him because he had the key to breaking the cycle, and we all look for that key. His key was religion. Steve Blackler? No, Stevenson. Oh, for... Kavanaugh and Atkinson, the teacher and the student, one free to do as he pleases, the other tasting freedom only for short periods on escorted day passes. Oh, yeah, there's a deer. There it is, right over behind the tree here. Oh, yeah, there's usually seven or eight that come by. Right? They're free to roam, and they feel protected here, though. Atkinson's goal now well, is to become to another uh, prison success story, just like Jimmy Cavanaugh. So can I have your name? Uh, my name is Joseph Nemhart. He produces and hosts a cable television show in Kingston called Contact. It's a show that gives people inside the prisons a chance to tell their stories to the people outside. It may not be a religious conversion, but Jimmy Cavanaugh says it's not just religion he's teaching. It's change. And Atkinson, he says, is getting the message. I see a guy that's finally woken up from the darkness. Same as I did. I woke up in a different way. But we're both headed in the right direction. Jimmy was a career criminal. I was a career criminal, so in talking to career criminals, Jimmy offers this insight that if you want to stop what you're doing and it's addictive crime, then there's a way to break that addiction. He chose God and it worked for him. I chose the camera and it's working for me now. I enjoyed what you had to say. Kavanaugh still knows the game on the other side of the prison walls, and that may be his biggest asset in his mission to fill a void in troubled lives. 
a man embarrassed about his past, has learned the importance of not forgetting it. But that little key, I'd be able to put it in to the lock. And you'd be sitting in the back of the van? I'd be sitting way. in the back of the van and I'd turn it open. I could get it out and the guards wouldn't hear me opening up the handcuff keys or the leg irons. Somehow, Jimmy Cavanaugh has found a way to take the mistakes of his past, find some good, and deliver it to others. What would you like to hear people say about Jimmy Cavanaugh? I think that uh, what, what I would like them to say is that he was one that, whose life was caught up with all kinds of turmoil, and it seemed that that was his destiny. However, that he was one that turned around and put his trust in the Lord, and God gave him a new life. Jimmy Kavanaugh has seen many changes in his life, and one which he is particularly proud of is making peace with his father, who had stopped drinking years ago. And therefore, Jimmy was able to take his wife to meet his parents at their 50th wedding anniversary, just before his father died. People can change. It's never easy, but it's possible, and it's always inspirational. The life of Jimmy Kavanaugh and others like him has been chronicled in this book called Prison Chains Broken by Ernie Hollands. Should you be interested in the chaplaincy service in our Canadian prisons, please contact Mr. Ernie Hollands at the following address. I'm Laurier Lapierre. Until next time.